Journalists like Shermin Obed Shinoy are on the front lines, shining a light on the abuse of women and children in Pakistan. The Pakistani journalist has won two Oscars, one for the documentary Saving Face, about acid attacks against women. And another for a documentary about a woman who survived an attempted honor killing. When ICFJ honored her, she spoke about her start in journalism. In a library in Karachi, where Arnold Zeitland, a night fellow sent by ICFJ, taught a group of us the art of journalism. What questions to ask, how to frame them, and how to write the investigative pieces that would start difficult conversations. That was my first formal training in journalism. She recently released an animated mini-series called Stories of Children, which tell true stories of heroism. One episode is about a 14-year-old boy who died while preventing a suicide bomber from entering his school. It takes a journalist like Obed Chinoy to take on the injustices against women and children in Pakistan. ICFJ is working with thousands of journalists like her, helping them to use new technologies and storytelling techniques to provide trustworthy coverage in an era of misinformation. The organization is in the trenches, helping journalists to hone their investigative skills. It is an increasingly dangerous time with journalists under attack and some paying with their lives. The Egyptian authorities threw blogger Wael Abbas in prison, charging him with involvement in a terrorist group, spreading false news and misuse of social networks. For more than a decade, Abbas has bravely documented the upheaval in Egypt. It takes a journalist with Abbas's courage to keep blogging despite government harassment posting videos of police brutality that led to convictions. When ICFJ honored him, he said he was determined to continue despite the risks. This award gives me new hope and faith that I'm pushing in the right direction. It is a vote of confidence, not just in me, but also in the growing community of bloggers in Egypt and the region. I see it as a sign that I must keep going. Abbas has now been behind bars for six months. ICFJ award winner Alua Toyosi Agunshaya recently took over as head of West Africa for the BBC. She made it a priority to serve as a judge for ICFJ's prestigious awards. I believe very much in what ICFJ stands for, and I think that one of the contributions I can continue to make is ensuring that I'm an active participant in this award. Agunshea was the first female editor of the Sunday Punch, one of Nigeria's most widely read newspapers. It takes a journalist like Agunshea to expose secret plans to build a nuclear power plant and to alert readers that local hospitals do not have enough incubators for newborns. ICFJ also honored Russian journalist Roman Anin for his outstanding investigative reporting. It takes a journalist like Anin to follow the money in Putin's Russia. Working with ICFJ partner, the Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project, he figured out that Russian President Vladimir Putin's best friend, cellist Sergei Roldugin, had billions of dollars stashed in Panamanian accounts. He led the investigation that exposed that Roldugin was caretaker of Putin's hidden fortune. It was one of the biggest revelations of the Pulitzer Prize winning Panama Papers. Another ICFJ honoree, Carmen Aristegui, persists in seeking out the truth in Mexico. 
it takes journalists working for her news outlet, Aristegui Noticias, to reveal that a young girl who miraculously survived last year's devastating earthquake was entirely made up by the government. Aristegui Noticias's biggest story to date was the Mexican scandal over Casablanca, or White House. Aristegui's team revealed that a government contractor built a lavish $7 million mansion for President Enrique Peña Nieto. Peña Nieto told an interviewer in August Casablanca was his biggest regret because of what it did to damage the institution of the presidency. Aristegui received a tip about the scandal as part of Connect Us, ICFJ's Latin American investigative network. It's yet another example of why vibrant societies need journalists to survive and thrive. And that is ICFJ's mission, to empower journalists to tell important stories that make a difference. <laughs>